We are waiting for the thumbs up from Robbie Cadeva, who'll be making some practice runs prior to. The build up, the endless news conferences, the satellite hookups around the country, all but a memory now. The only thing on Robbie Knievel's mind right now, getting safely to the other side. It's a long way across. Of course, in all of his previous jumps, he could continue on during these practice attempts but he's got fountains in front of him this time so he's got to stop at a certain point and go back unlike his father who broke 35 bones during his 12-year career Robbie has thus far managed his success at less cost in injuries Robbie like his dad a terrific athlete Here's a report from Dave Despain. We have seen Robbie make his first run up at the ramp. The hazard here at the fountains, as several have alluded to, the fact that he cannot do a flyby. Here comes his second run. He needs to get into fifth gear to make the jump. He's only able to run into third gear on these approaches. He needs to get, you hear the crowd reaction. They're loving this. They're ready for the excitement that is to come. He needs to get to about 85 miles an hour in order to successfully cross the gap. Because he cannot test that speed, he cannot run by the ramp at 85, he has to just give it the best shot that he can. His mother and sister look on as this young man tries to anticipate what he's going to need to get to the other side because he cannot truly test what he needs to get there. So these run-ups are the closest approximation he can get to the actual jump conditions. Thank you very much, Dave. Robbie Knievel has made two run-ups thus far. You just saw the thumbs-up indication. Here we go. This may be it. That faked out a lot of folks. The third run-up. Robbie obviously didn't think it was the time. And only he knows best. As you look at the expanse here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas as the tension builds. He's had three run-ups. Chatting with his crew. Dave Despain has more. Dave? Bill Rundle thought there was a good possibility that that might be the jump. He was waiting for Robbie. Robbie elected not to come. Bill, did you think that was going to be it, and is there any problem? No, he's going to come this shot, I think. This is it? This is it. We're ready. You've seen him do this a lot of times. Is he going to make it? He's going to make it. Bill Rundle says this is it, and he's on his way. <laughs> Bill, he's making you nervous, I can tell. I'm getting a little nervous, yeah. But we're, he's going to go over it. I've got a lot of faith in him, and he'll go this time. How does he know when the time is right? Whenever it feels right to him. None of us can tell him how to do it. You know, he's on his own. 
From what I've seen of this young man this week, I think that sums it up right there. He does this very much by the way it feels. He's doing this by the seat of his pants. Notice that that motorcycle has dirt track tires on the back, knobby tires. They're not designed to run on plywood. They're not designed to run on the asphalt that awaits him at the other side. They're designed for dirt. He says they'll cushion the landing better than a street tire. He told me that the first time I asked him about him. I pointed out that a street tire would stop him more effectively and that that seemed to be a key on the other side. And he looked at me and grinned and says, well, these tires just feel right. And I think when you get to the bottom line, this mission he is flying very much by the seat of his pants. When it feels right, he'll go. If the speed feels like it's there, he'll make the assault. Forget all the angles, forget all the physics, forget all the dimensions of the ramps and all the rest of the discussions that have gone before. When it feels right is when Robbie Knievel is going to do it. And if he's flying accurately by the seat of the pants, he's going to fly right into history. Again, Bill Rundle predicts this time will be it. We'll know, I think, when he comes sailing across that ramp. Steve? Let us see, Dave, if five is a charm. Lauren and your daughter Christian when you were at that point where you said I'm going to come up short what in the world went through your mind then uh, hang on because I thought I was going to land short like my dad and uh, have to deal with what he dealt with tell me about the practice runs you had to sense were, that that was just the right time see I, I didn't I haven't even been out here on a bike to make the run at the ramp but I had to shut down by the time I got to fourth gear each run. So I was in fifth gear going as fast as I could go. And uh, that's why I, I come up short. I should have been doing 85. I was probably doing 75 when I left the end of the ramp. Thanks, let's, thanks. let's look at the monitor here. You can see it. You tell us about it. I was shifting as fast as I could and as much as I could. This is Caesar's Palace. You got one shot. Come on, let go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring Lauren in here as she looks at it. Lauren, the wife of Robbie, she's looking at him almost for approval. Now, are you gathered enough to tell us what you were thinking before he did it? Well, I knew that he would make it, but I, w I was a little worried. And How about you? Were you worried about your daddy? Not worried at all, huh? No. No. <laughs> You could do it by yourself. I have a daughter like that, Robbie. Thank you very much, Dave. And Robbie Knievel, the heir apparent to Evil Knievel, has successfully jumped the fountains of Caesar's Palace here in Las Vegas. Just an unbelievable, spectacular scene. We'll take another look. Dave Diles is standing by with Dave Despain. 
for some final comments. Fellas? I said a couple of days ago to our executive producer, Jim Spence, uh, when I tried to capture the essence of the moment, I said that it's indescribable almost. I'm not a motorcyclist. Troy Rutman, whom you know, uh, youngest man ever to win the Indy 500, once gave me a motorcycle. And I hate to tell you, Troy, but I'm afraid to get on it. But this really had me going. I love motorcycles. And I know I think you do. The intensity of what we saw this man do with his motorcycle is really the essence of it. The danger is, is terrifying. Had he crashed, it would have been horrible. Point is, he didn't. Point is, I think that the fascination with this fountain can now be left behind. It has been conquered. No one else has to come here and get hurt trying to do that. And I think that's a good thing. And as far as the motorcycling experience, had uh, chills running up and down my back. <laughs> Even an old veteran gets the chills. Uh, I have to go change shirts, Steve Albert. All the anxiety, all the butterflies, all the apprehension, they are all finally behind us. Now that Robbie Knievel has conquered the fountains of Caesars Palace, what's next? Is it Wembley Stadium? Snake River Canyon? Who knows? One thing's for sure, though. Robbie Knievel can sit back, relax, breathe a deep sigh of relief, knowing full well he is the king of his profession. He has avenged his father's crash. Yes, the Knievel legend continues. For Dave Diles, Dave to Spain, our entire crew, Steve Albert saying good night from Las Vegas.